Hey, what's going on guys? Marvin here. Welcome back to another video. So this video is going to be a little bit more loose and just kind of hanging out with you guys, uh, answering some of your guys' questions. I get questions on every video that I get, and some of those questions require a little bit more of an extensive answer. So then I do these Q&As to answer those questions in further detail for you guys. All right, so let's get right into your questions. Is it possible to order your product to your house slash warehouse and then send it to Amazon for FBA? So they still do the shipping, prepping returns, uh, but you still get to manage quality control. Yes, you can absolutely ship it to yourself. Check out the products, make sure everything's in order and then ship it to Amazon and then you can have them do whatever you want. You are going to be paying for shipping multiple times though because you're going to be paying for shipping unless your, your supplier's shipping it for free. But let's say they're not, you're shipping from your supplier to you and then from yourself to Amazon. So just keep in mind, you're going to be paying for shipping twice. Uh, next one is from Zodishu. Marvin, you said let the supplier to hold your... 10 items and send your invoice to submit to Amazon uh, to get ungated. After you let them ship the items to Amazon warehouse, my question is who's going to put the Amazon ASIN stickers on these items? Yes, you can ask your supplier to hold on to your 10 units if you're trying to get ungated, but chances are that that's not going to work as well right now due to COVID, due to Q4 coming up. Amazon is taking a lot longer with ungating applications. So if you're gonna have your supplier hold onto it, they only wanna hold onto it for as little amount of time as possible. And if it takes you a week or longer to get ungated, then chances are they're not gonna to wanna to hold onto the product in their warehouse for that long. So you have to communicate that with your supplier, but yes, you can still have them hold onto the inventory while you're getting ungated. You just have to make sure you're communicating with them. And then as far as the uh, labels that you're gonna put onto these products, you can put them on or your supplier can put them on or Amazon can put them on, whatever you wanna do. All right, the next question is from Nelson. Hey Marvin, if I was to do FBM, how do I position myself to win the buy box? Uh, you're gonna have to sell it at a lower price. It's different from listing to listing. There's no blanket um, uh, amount that you have to be lower than the buy box. Some are less and some is a, is a much bigger price gap that you're gonna to have to be lower in to win that buy box. You're still gonna be making sales, you're just not gonna be as competitive as the FBA sellers on there um, unless you're like a seller for Philip Prime or something. Uh, next question comes from Wisdom Hours. Uh, someone told me that individual seller accounts cannot win the buy box. No, individual seller accounts are pretty much useless. You shouldn't use them unless you're barely signing up and you just kind of want to walk around the Seller Central dashboard. Um, but no, Seller Central, uh, but no, individual accounts are not going to win the buy box. All right, so the next question comes from Chris Richter Mindset. Does Amazon charge you to put labels on? Yes, they charge you to put labels. Amazon doesn't do anything for free. Keep that in mind. And they're going to charge you 30 cents to put the labels on your products. All right, the next question comes from Sleek Nub. Sleek noob. Uh, hey Marvin, I think you might have covered this in video. Uh, do you use manufacturer barcode or Amazon barcodes? You can use either one. Um, not all products are eligible for manufacturer barcodes. So it, within your shipping plan, you're gonna have the option to pick Amazon barcodes or manufacturer barcodes if your product is eligible. Not all products are eligible, but if you have the option, you can pick manufacturer barcode. You're gonna skip the, the labeling fee and they're gonna use the manufacturer barcode already on that product to tr be able to track your inventory, where it's going, and all of that good stuff. Like I said, only certain products are eligible for manufacturer barcodes. All products are able to put Amazon labels on them. So if you want to not use the manufacturer labels, even though they're eligible, you can still choose to use Amazon's labels, and then you're gonna pay that 30 cent fee. Uh, Cody Honeycut. I don't know if I missed it, but uh, do you have any info on what kind of Amazon seller account you need to do wholesale? Again, you don't need a specific account. All you need is a professional Amazon seller central account and you can do private label, you can do wholesale, you can do arbitrage, you can do whatever you want. It's all under that professional Amazon seller account. Uh, next question comes from Zanas. Uh, do you always ship your products directly to Amazon? When I can, I absolutely take advantage of that, ship my products directly to Amazon, have them prep and do all that good stuff. Uh, if I have to, I'll send it to my prepper, and then on worst case scenario, I'll send it to myself. All right, next question comes from Randolph Lee. Is product saturation inevitable on Amazon? What do you do to maintain the FBA business after a product is good at a time of purchase, but then dies due to saturation? So this is a good question. I probably should make a video on like uh, product saturation just to go more in depth, not just in this Q&A, but every product has a life cycle. Right, so regardless of the brand, regardless of how big that product is in popularity, every single product has a life cycle. Some are short and then some are much, much longer. As far as product saturation, 
This can occur for many different reasons. Uh, increase in competition, loss of popularity, um, loss of demand. So there's a bunch of different reasons that are gonna to lead to that product being saturated and then no longer profitable. This is inevitable with any product because like I said, they all have their life cycle that they're gonna remain profitable. If you can get in with a brand and then get an exclusive down the road after you've been working with them, then you can do a much better job at eliminating the chances of a product becoming saturated with competitors or for whatever reason, and then you're gonna be able to sell that product yourself or amongst a small group of Amazon sellers that are working directly with that brand. So just keep that in mind. Hopefully that answers your question. I can make another video specifically talking about just that because there's a lot of stuff that I can go over when it comes to that question. All right, so next question is from Courtney B. Uh, when I'm looking at a product, let's say a Hasbro game, and I click get approved, uh, but it is not auto approved, I have to send an invoice showing I have purchased 10 units. Do those 10 units have to be the exact Jenga game or can I purchase 10 of any Hasbro game and send it in. So I've actually did this in the very beginning when I first started trying to get ungated and it did not work for me. I had multiple, it was actually Hasbro, multiple different Hasbro games adding up to more than 10 didn't work, okay? So it has to be the exact product, 10 units of that exact product that you're trying to get ungated in, not a mixture of a bunch of different Hasbro products to get ungated. If you already have the products, you already have the invoice and it's with you at your house, it doesn't hurt to try to apply it. Uh, but usually when it comes to ungating, I try to give you the best practices. So it's not the only way to do it. It's just what I have done many, many times to get ungated and what has consistently worked for me. And that goes along with my ungating video. I'll link it up right here if you guys need to watch the ungating video again. Uh, but those are best practices, not the only way to get it done. It's just the best practices that I've used in order to get ungated when sometimes I was just constantly getting denied. So just keep that in mind. All right, so this next question comes from Sebastian Cook Espinet. Uh, as I've done my research for Wholesale FBA, I've seen that there's pretty much two options for purchasing products, through the brand itself and then through distributors. I've heard that you might want to go through brands rather than distributors because with the distributor, that's one more person in the line cutting a check and taking a profit. All right, Sebastian, this is a great question. It's gonna clear up a lot of uh, different questions that people are probably asking themselves regarding this exact same topic. But when it comes to working with brands and working with distributors, in this scenario that you're asking me, let's say you and a distributor are buying directly from the same exact brand, right? You're able to come in and purchase, let's say 10,000 or even $20,000 worth of inventory from that brand. But the distributor shows up and is able to purchase half a million or a million dollars worth of inventory from that same exact brand that you're sourcing from. Who do you think is going to get a better price the distributor that's purchasing much much more volume than you right so when it comes to this scenario that you're asking me here it would be smarter to work with a distributor not in every case but it would be smarter to work with a distributor who's going to be able to pass those discounts along to you because they're clearly going to be getting that price much much lower than you are by just spending 10 or 20 thousand directly with that brand uh, with that being said, this isn't always the case, and I highly encourage people to try to work with brands and try to work with distributors because, like I said, this isn't the case all the time. So work with brands, work with distributors. Do not limit yourself to just one or the other because there's huge potential and there's huge benefits to working with both. You have to remember that this is an Amazon business. You're not just solely focused on one thing and that's the only way you will ever sell on the platform. Keep your options open and do what's gonna be most profitable for your business. So hopefully that answers the question. I know a lot of people wonder about this exact same thing uh, when they're first getting started. But that's it for the Q&A guys. If you guys have any more questions, just leave them down below in the comments section and I will do my best to answer them with another q and I'm gonna try to do these at least a couple times a month just to elaborate more on some of the questions that I do get because some of the questions that I get just require more extensive answers. All right guys, but I will see you in that next video.